Hi guys, welcome back to another Overthrow Disc Golf video. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Two things, real quick. One, I have to give a big shout out to Chris Taylor, Coach Chris Taylor on Instagram. Here's his handle. This video is coming about through many conversations with him, so shout out to him. Second, we still have a couple of these on the site for you Pacific Northwesterners. Shout out, so go ahead and grab some if you want. All right, so backhand timing. First, timing is simply when things happen in relation to one another. So this is why sometimes we say slow is smooth, smooth is far, because it's more important for you to be in sync with your own body's timing than it is for you to be fast and out of sync regarding timing. In this sense, you can say that basically every form problem is a timing problem. Or should we do the, the Robbie aside, like the I'm close to the camera, and then just like a ran random thought? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So when people tell me that they think that their form problem is timing, of course it is. So I'm gonna break this down into two parts. I'm gonna break it down into footwork timing and then upper body timing. Now, as always, we have chapter divisions, so you can just skip forward to the parts that you need. Let's go. So footwork timing, I'm gonna start with just this kind of right step before the X step for you righties. It's really important that before this X step, you don't turn around at all. For example, this would be bad if you're, if you're already back here. Let's say you're doing like a five step or a four step. So let's say you go here and you're already turning here and then you're here. This is really bad. Definitely don't do that. We don't wanna be back pedaling. Everything's a side step. You wanna make sure that you're side on the step before your X step. That's right step if you're a righty, left step if you're a lefty. So you wanna make sure that you're still basically side on and then you cross step towards the target. You're not turning back during this cross step we wanna save all of the coiling for when your weight is down on your cross step and then coil, then swing your arms back, then turn your back to the target. Anything before that, no good. You will see some pros get here, I should address this, that some guys get a little more back. I'm not saying that your foot has to be exactly perpendicular before you coil. It depends on your flexibility and can you make sure that this next part of the process here, this next timing piece, is that we spend the entire time coiling here instead of uncoiling early, right? That would be not in time. So we wanna spend the entire last step coiling. If your cross step gets too far backwards, like this might work for some people, but for a lot of people, they're gonna lack mobility. Um, that would allow them not to open up during this last step to get back online. If you're too far backwards, now you have to open up early to hit your line here. You're gonna have to play with that and find out what makes it so that you don't force yourself to uncoil on this last step. Brace timing is the last piece here on footwork timing that I wanna hit. So coil happens here. We start swinging during this last step. The arms are swinging back as you step forward. The shoulders are swinging back as you step forward. And then we need to weight shift onto this front foot. We need to get all the pressure onto this front foot before the arms start swinging forward. So big issue that most people have regarding brace timing is that they will go and start swinging the arms forward into the brace. So they're putting pressure down on this front foot as they're swinging forward. That's very different than this right here where I get all the pressure over first and then start swinging the arms. If you have a problem with brace timing, that's probably it. That's gonna make it so that you can't really get a solid base under you. It's gonna leak power, basically. Okay, that's it for lower body timing and problems derived from it. Now let's go into upper body timing. An analogy that most of you are probably familiar with is this whole figure skater idea. Let me give you that analogy in my own words here and hopefully it will help clear some things up and make it quite a bit more simple for you. The idea with the figure skater and getting tight is you're wide and so they're building up momentum while they're wide and then they tuck and they're tight and that allows them to spin faster. And then when they untuck, they're slowing down. In terms of upper body timing, it's all about can you be wide and tight and then wide in sync with your own body. Let me show you good timing. It's wide, tight together, wide again. That's good timing. Now when we say slow is smooth, smooth is far, it's because if I try to speed up here, 
in an open up a U, which I really did try to do. I've missed you by 45 degrees. I opened up late and now I'm hitting first available, all these things. So it's easier for you to get your timing good at slower speeds. Now, the other thing is you never see a figure skater do this. You never see them go tuck, tuck, untuck, untuck. It's coordinated arms moving in and out together because if I leave, for example, this left arm, if I just leave it out and I try to tuck and untuck, I move much more slowly. So most of us need to learn how to tuck our arms in sync and then untuck them in sync. That's it. Now, let me copy and paste all of that into the disc golf throw for you. Okay, so timing, queso. Man, don't you want some queso right now? Queso timing. So our arms, our shoulders have not swung back until this final step here, in which point we swing both arms back. We're getting wide at this point. We swing both arms back in sync with one another and they help turn the shoulders away as well as get us wide. Now, I don't think you need to get wide, wide like this. You can, it doesn't matter if you're super wide or if you're tucked like this, it doesn't have as far to travel so it makes it a little easier to sync up this timing. Okay, so both arms together, we're wide. So just like the figure skater, we don't see them go wide tuck and then tuck. They don't go boom, boom like that. They go both arms in to have the most speed that they can have. So we're doing the same thing here. Both arms are coming in tight to the body together. Tight is here. This is deep pocket. You'll see it's on my right pec, not just bouncing out of the left pec all the way to the right pec. This is tight and this arm gets tight. But Josh, I see pros move their left hand earlier than their right arm moves forward. I see it too. I used to think that this aided in rotation. This is not the way. If it did aid in rotation, we'd see someone like Garrett Gerthy, instead of going here with his left arm, he would go here if it was aiding in rotation because that's how you drive this back shoulder. Garrett Gerthy's not driving the back shoulder and he throws quite far. It's here, it gets tight together. So for him, his timing says, in order for my arms to be tight, my hand needs to come here and that's how I can make sure I tuck my arms at the same time. Quite simply that. What you'll see is Drew, for example, will bring his left arm in before his right arm. This early move of the hand is simply a timing piece that allows him to get tight at the correct time and for him to be as tight as possible. This caterpillar's coming right for me, bro. So Might be carnivorous. So we got both arms out, both arms in, and then at this point, we're gonna start getting wide again. The second we start opening up this arm, we start slowing down, right? Just like the second I start opening up, I start slowing down here. So that's why we want to stay tight for as long as possible. Common timing issue for amateurs here is they try to drive and get this left shoulder forward, or if they're a righty, they're trying to drive and get this left shoulder forward, and now their hand is way back here, and they can't get deep into the pocket. There's more leverage here. There's more whip here. We'll talk about that in a future video, but they're throwing out from here, and it's just all back shoulder driven. What you want, timing-wise, is you want for this hand to outpace the shoulders. You can do that by slowing down, or you can do that by speeding up the hand. It's the same thing. So if I see someone here, either they have tried to move too quickly with the shoulders because their hands can't go any faster, or their hands can go faster, and so you need to move it faster, get it into the pocket faster. Basically, the timing piece is both arms are back, both arms are forward here, and you need to get into this position, which you can do right now slowly. The issue is, is if you're uncoiling super quick, quicker than your hands can get to this position, then you're never gonna get there. It doesn't make sense for me to go here and then pull it over to my right pec and release because I'm going to hit a tree. So the timing piece here, both arms in together so that you're in this position where both arms are tight, not this position. The next thing that happens timing wise, so you're here, is the extension of the right arm the throwing out of the right arm, which will happen fairly naturally if you get into this position. You're not gonna just stay curled up. So no need to spend a lot of time here. Get deep and then get the hand away from the body 
and we touched on this earlier but it's worth mentioning again here a lot of amateurs try to get to the follow through early so they know that they're supposed to end up in this position over here where the chest is open and everything's open and so instead of focusing on the hit and making sure that they get into this position they go get into the follow through and if you're thinking about the follow through then you're probably going to miss the hit and you're going to over rotate your shoulders inhibiting the pocket the deep pocket so it's really important that you understand that this hit happens here i'm only slightly open this would be all the way open i'm only slightly open with the chest by the time that the arm gets out timing issue here would be chest is here while the hands out there that would be throwing from the back shoulder again so when does the follow-through happen how does it happen the follow-through happens after the lead shoulder starts opening up and you start spreading the wings here and then this pulls basically everything else around so it would be and then it pulls around you'll notice pros aren't going spin it all forward there's a little blip or a or almost a lag of this back leg before it starts coming around it'll go it's here and then it'll pop around sometimes you'll see pros go and then they'll like kick. You can see Drew doing that or Ezra, but it's always delayed because they're not trying to open the hips into the shot. They're planted above the hips. The arm goes and eventually it swings everything around if you're loose. So don't focus on the follow through when you're working on the hit. Let that happen naturally, be loose enough that it happens naturally. What I don't want you doing, just a word of caution, is I don't want you going and staying here. That's bad news. You need to be cognizant enough, if that's your propensity, that, okay, you need to let it come around. But other than that, most people don't need to think about that. They need to think about being posted up over, over their hips here and all those other upper body like positions. So Mikey wants me to make a very important distinction and I'm in full agreement. When I'm showing this from a static position, I'm showing positions here, it's easy to think that this foot needs to stay planted in the ground and the whole throw needs to happen before this foot pivots. Not the case. The foot can pivot whenever it wants to pivot and you should let it pivot when it's ready. And we don't need to focus too much on timing there. I just want you to make sure that you're not like forcing it to not pivot. Let it go because if it's stuck in the ground and your hips rotating away, there's something in between that called your knee. And that's a nice thing to have, but you're gonna, you're gonna blow it if you try to keep this foot planted there. A note here, it's really easy to get caught up in the minutia of when do my shoulders swing and when do my hips open? Because we know that the shoulders open and we know that the hips open. At what rate do they do it? What starts, blah, blah, blah. If you just get into this position here, then your shoulders have opened at the correct speed, your hips have opened at the correct speed. All that's thrown in. When we think about, I don't know, tossing a ball or taking your garbage bag and tossing it up into a dumpster, you don't think about, oh, my shoulders, my hips. It's, the goal is this. And everything else just helps get to the goal. And the exact time and how all of that happens, you don't need to worry about. Get into this position and get into this position and then work on making sure that your own timing is in sync with itself so just remember there's a lot of different looking form out there on the pro tour where your arms go where your left arm goes where your right arm goes like how you swing it's not as important as it being in sync with the rest of your form and this is why you need to take time to practice after you get a form piece looking right because then it's time to sync it up and make it feel good. Cool. All right, guys, I hope that helps. More videos on mechanics. I know you guys, there are a couple takes in here where I was going into mechanics early. I know we all want that, but this is probably more important than the exact mechanics of how these things work. Really mull this one over. We're bringing the mechanics to you soon. Peace. No, no, no.